Hi everybody, here's a short tutorial on how to use uh, Spoke, uh, which is the scene editor for Mozilla Hubs. So you go to this website, which uh, whoop, if I hit on the right screen, f11 hubs.mozilla.com. Uh, mine looks like this because I'm, I'm logged in with my email address here, so I have all my favorites. But basically you go to Spoke. Um, if you're signed in, you'll be able to do projects. Um, I'm going to do a new project here and you get a, a list of some um, pre-made examples there, the River Island one, one of the first rooms you come into. And if you hit on all, you can see many, many more. Basically, these are all the ones that are um, available to share with the Creative uh, Commons license. So it's an option when you, you save your, your scene made with Spoke. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to make an empty one. And what you'll find is it doesn't come in completely empty. It actually comes in with this kind of mountain landscape. And as you can see here, if I click on this left click, uh, a spawn point. So I'm going to blow, I'm going to blow some of this. I'm going to turn it off. Um, so you could come in basically with an empty room like this. Um, yeah, so this is like a game editor. You have a, an interactive 3D window, left click and drag the mouse will rotate around whatever selected, I believe, and right click, which is what I use the most, is like turning your head around and looking. So you can fly in with the keyboard controls W, A, S, and D to you know the object that you're working on. Um, yeah, by default, there's a skybox. That's basically everything you see up there. So it's a kind of a sun and a, and a, a neutral sky. Uh, there's a directional light in, so you can see when I click on that, you see which direction the light's shining on. And everything, as you can see here, can be sort of turned on and off, so you see the effect on the avatar there. Uh, the floor plan is basically just a measure of the walkable space, so it's usually a huge uh, kind of area. You can actually see that there. Um, and it is showing cell size there, which is basically this, this grid. Uh, I'm not quite too sure this is connected, but you can change the grid here that is at least visible and that's used for snapping objects around. Um, these elements here allow you to bring in uh, various objects. So uh, there's lighting in here, different lights, you can play around with them. There's a collider, which is basically just a, a kind of box as you can see here. Um, and if I make this box a bit bigger, basically this is something which is uh, invisible, but your avatar will not be able to, you know, walk through it. Uh, that's the concept of a box collider. Usually what you do is you bring in some um, 3D assets. Um, so you've got the possibility to bring in 3D assets from objects which are essentially already on the cloud, so you can either click on them and they appear on the end of your mouse. Um, so all of these architecture kit assets are things which are uploaded on um, the Mozilla Hubs uh, cloud, uh, and you can simply bring them in. So if I click on this now, these floor base, uh, okay, it doesn't show you. Um, same with rocks, but when you click on Sketchfab or Google Poly, it basically gives you a filter of um, those online catalogs of 3D models, but only the ones which are in .glb format. Uh, as you can see, there's you can sort of drag them in, uh, or you can just click on it and it will come in on your mouse. A slightly different behavior there based on the scale. Um, so the, Oh, I should repeat that. So dragging in, if you put it over an existing mesh, it will try to put it on that mesh. That's what the the dragging behavior does. So it's trying to put it on top of that object. If I click, it just appears on the end of my mouse. Um, so you can see here, yeah, you get all your objects. Um, you can, if you hold down uh, shift, you can select multiple ones and you can do control and G to group them together. Uh, and of course you can delete everything from the tree as well. Um, and the same goes for images, Bing videos, sounds. These are all things which are already on the cloud. Uh, but what you may have to do is, especially for 3D assets, is 
find them in a FBX or an OBJ format and then convert them into .glb, which you can do on Windows, by the way, in the 3D Builder, or I think it's a 3D Paint or 3D Viewer application. You can import an FBX and save as .glb, very handy. Um, but what I've done here is I've imported quite a lot of assets, which are um, I've converted or images and sounds that I've made uh, by myself. So um, let's bring in this Matterport model, which I found on Sketchfab. Um, and I should have learned my lesson because I've just dragged it in. I'm going to do that again. So I'm just going to click on it and it appears on the end of my mouse at the right scale. Quite often you'll find that the models are the wrong scale. Um, so if I bring in this one, this uh, boathouse, you can see there that it's just occupying all my space. Uh, so I'm just zooming out with the right click uh, and S key and holding down shift to move the camera more quickly. We can see there that it's way too big. So I remember this is uh, 0 0.5. If I type that into the scale on the right hand side here, and then I can double click on it just to, to center in. So you can see it's about the right size. So you may have to scale your models when you bring them in, move them onto the origin. Uh, that's just disappeared there. Um, and ideally you get one which is one to one scale and you can see that <clears throat> with uh, the avatar here. So just a quick note on these handles to move things around, it's pretty, obvious left click and drag and you can move the model around in space. Uh, so now my, our, our spawn point is in the middle of this and there's a few tools here. So it's on translate mode, you can hit rotate. Uh, you then get these uh, rings that allow you to rotate in increments, uh, which are set up here by the snapping dialogue. So 90 degrees, it will go click. Uh, and if I turn that down to 45 degrees, then you'll see it will be two kind of snappings, uh, if that's a word. Um, and the same for scale. So you can translate, rotate and scale with the handles, or you can do that with um, this dialog here where you can key in for very precise movements, or you can left click and drag over any of these letters, just like any other game engine. So you can see there that this uh, 3D model that I've got here has actually got its own uh, URL. That's the way that WebXR works, that all these assets are actually things which are uploaded onto the web in this case. This is uh, the sort of traffic management um, tool, I guess, the cloud, um, uh, I guess, media repository, which uh, Mozilla Hubs are using. Um, yeah, what else? Um, I'm gonna bring in a floor plane here because I'd like to have um, just a sort of reference. So you can see that now we've got a floor plane that just stretches out. Um, and the other thing that I wanna show you as a trick is, um, so you can play around with lights, directional lights, these are all pretty straightforward. Lights won't show up on Quest very well. I think it, it simplifies it. Um, waypoints are very useful. So if you want to have a specific waypoint, for people to teleport to, you need to bring in a waypoint. By default, it comes in at a one-to-one -one scale, uh, and there's a lot of options here. So you can have this waypoint as a spawn point. Uh, when there's two spawn points, like there is just now one inside and one outside, when two people try to join it at the same time, it'll simply use one or the other. Um, and if you say occupiable and clickable, it basically becomes a teleport waypoint. So somebody can use their space button, or I can't remember which key it is on, on Quest, but you can then move to that uh, point. So this is quite useful if, for example, you wanted to put um, a waypoint um, in a roof here. So this one is on the roof. So maybe you don't have a ladder or a way that you can smooth uh, locomotion up there, uh, but you've now got a waypoint which is going to be occupiable and clickable. These are the two options you need if you want to allow people to go up there. It's also quite useful to disable motion. It means that once somebody's in that waypoint, they can't just free move around. Um, so for example, when we do demos, we lock people down on their first experience so they can't just kind of translate around the room like crazy. It's also useful for cinema seats, that kind of thing where you want people seated. Um, the other thing that's important, this is a, a, a 3D model, it's a mesh obviously. And by default, 
um, you have collidable and walkable on. And basically collidable means that you can't walk through the walls like I've just done with my camera here. So your avatar will actually stop when it gets to that. And walkable means that you can use the teleport um, right click if you're using it on desktop and it's one of the main buttons on the Oculus controllers if you want to teleport around. So that, that, that enables that functionality. Uh, you should be aware that when you publish your scene, if you have a lot of complex um, 3D models, this collidable could have a performance impact. So it, it creates, it searches the scene and it creates a, basically a collision mesh as a separate object, as a single object. So you don't have many collision meshes, uh, which, which can affect performance um, if you've got many objects. So it turns it into one object, which is good. Um, so there's less draw calls. Um, but uh, is that, that option has got to be turned on for that merging of the collision meshes. Um, and the rest is pretty much straightforward there. So lighting, spawn points you need, waypoints you need, or you can have a spawn point or a waypoint with the, the spawn option turned on. The other cool trick, of course, I can do copy and paste. I'm doing control uh, C and control V. You saw that I've got two things in the tree there. Um, the other thing you can do, which is very interesting, is you can actually scale these um, avatars. So this is the same as changing your scale in VR. So if you come in uh, on and teleported basically into this extra large avatar, you would, um, yeah, you would feel huge and everything else would look tiny. And of course, the same thing can be done. You can be, if I could copy and paste again, I can make that smaller. So let's just say 0.5 and you can feel what it's like to be tiny. Um, and then the final thing is you can see here, I've got several waypoints. If I do shift left click, I can multi-select. You can select a whole lot for some reason, I think it's web, but you can do then control G. Uh, you then have a group um, that just help you to organize your tree here. Um, you then can move that group of waypoints uh, around as a as a group like you can see there that's basically it there's no scripting it's just bringing in waypoints and 3d models and sound and and, and the video um, and of course you want to use spoke to bring in uh, your images here so let me just bring in something that I've uploaded um, yeah if I drag it against uh, a plane like that it will snap it against the plane I can use Q and E to turn that image around um, and then uh, we might want to just scale that up a bit. So bringing in your images, um, of course, in Spoke allows you to align them pretty much perfectly against surfaces and do things which you can't do when you're just pinning objects in the hub's room. So that's it pretty well. The other thing I wanted to show, of course, was bringing in a spherical picture. Um, so I've got a couple here. If I bring this one in, it projects it um, flat, as you can see here. So I'll bring it up, you can see that's a, a flat image. I can change the projection to 360. And then I've got a nice uh, panoramic image around my, uh, my scene there with the 3D model in it. I'll make this a lot bigger. And then you get the effect of, of being inside it effectively. And I think I'll raise it up a little bit there. So that's how you can use 360 video and um, uh, photographs, of course. Uh, just an example of a video. So I've uploaded a video here. It's about, it's gotta be less than 128 megabytes, any content if you're using the, the free version of Hubs, the preview version. So you can see there my video. And I've got some controls here. I want to turn off autoplay so it doesn't play uh, when you come in and you can, turn that into a spherical video if it's uh, recorded like that in the beginning. So there's a video, uh, sound works the same, an image, some waypoints, a 360, and that's how you make your scene. So then a very important thing before I save it is to get my camera set up in a position that I want for the thumbnail. So a nice square picture like that. Generates the screenshot as the thumbnail, give it a name. Test one, save the project, and it, it basically now saves this and publishes it as a scene which can be used for a Mozilla Hubs uh, room. 
clever thing is, so when it's going through this exporting scene, what it will do is um, it will create the collision mesh, it uploads anything that is not um, you know, on their cloud to their cloud, and it gives you this warning. So it's saying here, okay, high polygon count, uh, recommended less than 50,000. So that's that Matterport model, a very small one. It's saying here there's a high amount of textures in there. That's this big spherical picture. What I found is that um, these guidelines are a bit um, on the cautious side. So it's made maybe for an iPhone 6 or you know a low-end Android phone, but anything above an Android 8, uh, a Quest certainly will run up to a million triangles. Um, my iPhone 8 will run uh, 500,000 triangles, I think. Um, never had a problem with, with textures really, but you do just want to be aware that you're not absolutely uh, abusing these, these guidelines. Um, and then when you publish, it uploads anything that might not be on the cloud and it's saving this scene as a as a usable scene in, in hubs on the cloud somewhere. So but it goes goes pretty quick. Uh, maybe while I'm doing that, the other thing that I forgot to mention is that any content you bring in, like a picture, the video, the spherical picture, um, you've got that option there that says controls. You, Unless you want people to move that those things around, you should turn that off. Uh, you'll see what happens when I'm in the, the room now. So let's just view our scene. Uh, this is then going to create a hubs room from that scene. And of course these scenes appear in if you're logged in, of course, in your list of objects. So that's our lobby view. And I just go ahead and enter this. I, I appear basically where that spawn point was. So you just saw the problem there. So I'm, I can move around this, this room with the keyboard controls again. You can see my nice uh, spherical picture there. Struggling to find the door. Uh, there's my video which I can play with sound uh, it comes in very clear and I think the opening was on this side yeah so I can ah so I should be able to go in there there shouldn't be a collision so you see I've actually got a collision even on this visible hole so I have to click on G if you've got fly note mode enabled uh, oh yeah it's kicking me out again so I have to use G to get inside here. So I, sh I shouldn't have had that collisions on. Let's just see, right click. Yeah, so you're seeing a variety of problems I've got. Uh, when I right click, what it's doing is selecting the sphere because that's what's behind the floor. And it's giving me this uh, controls that it talks about in Spock. So I can basically view an object um, and pan around it. And this will be the same for um, anything else if I go out and pick my video. If I right click on this video, it should be the same. So I get that basically as a full screen video, but I can pan around it. So you want to turn off that those controls. Um, yeah, sorry about that. A couple of things I forgot to turn off in there in the end. Most important is when you create your room is to favorite it and then it saves it um, uh, onto your homepage. And the other thing is here that of course, my scene, if I click on my scene, should pop up here, test one, test two. So that's where you have access to those scenes and of course in the Spokes editor. So I hope that was informative to you and, and you get on with uh, Mozilla Hubs a bit better and I'll speak to you later. Bye bye.